It's a similar one. It's another one where people are going to tell you it must be because he's flawed. No, this is where narratives kill players dead. They really do. Because you want to know the saddest thing that I'll connect to what I just said a second ago. You know those general managers? It ain't just commentators, mate. General managers care about Reddit narratives too. They buy community hype. It's one of the reasons I think Falcons have fucking Dupree right now. <laughs> We're going to actually all lie to ourselves because we love Dupree and pretend he's like a hitch on TV top 20 player. In fact, worse than that, in the spot he's in, he basically should be a top 10 player. And then we're going to go, but because he's not the worst, in fact, he fragged out, that makes it, no, he doesn't. What that does is he's never going to be the Nico, the Nerds that you wanted. Even worse, he's not even a bunch of these other players. Like, you know what? So here's the angle for my bad point. I've been sniffing around a little bit and trying to see what the transfer market is like. Like, who is considering this player? And it's fucking bumming me out. Because you know, blame F. If he comes back, boys, it's probably going to be for a low tier one or just a tier two team. Or he's not oh. coming back. He's just sitting there waiting for the contract. And by the way, remember, him and Device, I think, signed till 2025 or something. I think that was like the move that was done when they caught a bunch of the players, right? This is a fucking bummer and a half. This is why people don't have an eye test and don't watch Counter-Strike. So let me see. Dexter, eye test checks out like a motherfucker. He's toxic, can't sign him. Oh, well, my bad. I guess I'll just look for another perfect or put... Oh, there aren't any. Sorry, there's like three people in the world who can do that and they're all in the best teams in the world. Well, we shall have a look then. Then let's go down. Oh, what's that? I want to sign some player like Blame F who consistently produces, no matter what you think about his role or what you think about his calling, forget his calling. He proved he doesn't need to call to do it. He did it all with Glaive calling. He is one of the most... Like Dexter, he's one of the most slam-dunk production players in the history of Counter-Strike over the last... One what, six, seven years? Like, put him in any lineup in, in Astralis, he produces. But what do they tell you about him? Remember, no, you've never heard a single person say he's toxic. Too passive. And it's like, oh, my mistake. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Let me get another one of those riflers who plays lurker role and basically always produces numbers, but is also quite aggressive. Or they're all in the best teams in the world and not available. God, how many times do we have to do this? That instead, we're signing Skulls for 600k. We're signing Fallen for 700k. We're doing these mental signings that don't make any sense while these players sit there gathering dust on a shelf. And you know what's worst? Like the Dexter point that Maui made, give this guy another six months and do you know what the next point against him will be? Hasn't played for nine months, has he? I don't even know he's any good. And eventually, you'll have all talked yourself out of a player that if you ever had an eye test, it's a slam dunk. Every single time I ever say on Twitter, this guy is a guaranteed frag. Lopez, because it's just who he is as a person, has to go. Yeah, but he's very passive. It's like, Lopez, you played as a fucking IGL. If you don't know what's hilarious about the Lopez one is, he had one of the most passive 1.6 players ever to play Counter-Strike. He was called Conte from the finish scene, but because he was amazing in clutches, they pretended his role was clutch player, so they allowed him to be super passive. Do you know why those players work? It's the other way around. You know, people think it's baiting, right? Brother, how do you bait on the CT side of the game? All the blame of highlights you're thinking of aren't him on T's side, like Happy sitting in an angle shooting two people as they save the gun. It's on CT's side, he murks people with the rifles. He's fucking unbelievable, right? That's not called baiting. That's called he holds his angle and shoots three people when they come into it consistently in a spot that's supposed to get one and a half kills. Like, I agree. I wouldn't have him on, like, fucking Falcons. That doesn't make sense. But if I had a team where, I'll give you a few examples, the following teams, I would sign him to them in a heartbeat. G2 Esports, Ents, Heroic, Complexity. All of these teams, he can have his spots, he can have his roles, and if he produces, and I have to say, history says he will, all of these teams are better. And you know the reason I also picked all those teams? They all have the aggressive rifle that you need. Or they have the AWPA. They would all be better tomorrow. So the idea that this guy actually, it's looking bad right now. It's also one of the reasons I wanted to make the point on this show because, spoiler, if you're out there and you're some dickhead thinking of signing skulls for 600k, this guy's available. You can, I can tell you that sort of money, you can get this guy. You can get him into your team. And by the way, like the point about Saw with Dexter, in six months, if you sign him, you'll get to pretend like with Wonderful in Na'Vi and like with Dexter, Vecchi and Hiroki, you'll get to look like a genius. You'll get to have everyone back on the back and go, yeah, it was obvious you should have signed it. I always thought he was great. I thought he was great. The same people sitting too passive too, but I don't even still, the thing I've never understood is this. I've always been a critic of Blame F the IGL. As far as I know, if you ever saw the interviews this last time in Astralis, they asked him if Glam 
Clave leaves or we cut Clave, can you be the IGL? Notice how different that is from I want to be. He didn't do what you can do as far as I know. He didn't go put me back in that hot seat. What he basically did, uh, stupidly by the way now, don't ever trust Astralis. Don't ever turn your back on fucking Nicola and I or Mommy. He trusted that like by taking that role, they'd do right by him. Well, guess what? That fucked his career. I think if he'd have just stayed, by the way, in that other spot, there's no, they don't sign Sound. And by the way, you're all going to laugh now. Stown's amazing. Stown fucking doesn't exist in playoffs. Blame F might not be the best player ever. Tell you what, he turned up in playoffs though. So I think, I cannot, just like Dexter, I can't conceive of why we're coming up with reasons that aren't about how they play CS as to why we're not letting these guys play CS. Because I think this guy's fire, mate. He might not be like a top five rifler, but if he isn't, he's a top 10 rifler. How about that? I feel like the uh, term beat has been warped over over time for for a, a, just specifically because of this player, uh, which I don't think is is his fault. I, I don't think that I don't think he is a baiter by any means. Yes, he plays T sides very slowly, but I mean, I never felt as though that that should be necessarily a liability. Um, he's been such a stud over the, the over twenty twenty three that. It, it felt like I was just waiting for the, the signing to come in. It was supposed to just be a surprise and then he would be on a top team. But, I mean, that, that really bumps me out that it's not a possibility because... Just at the moment. Just at the moment. Which which I, I'd, I'd hope that hopefully the narrative can change over time. And I think, yeah, if, if Reddit if Reddit can, can take away a player's career, why not give him one uh, and, and try to start the narrative somewhere? But... Um, yeah, I, I think that it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I don't really have much to add because I, I completely agree. I think that Blame F is, is, is absolutely a, a top 10 rifler and, and always will be. But um, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to just give him the space that he needs to, to, to work because any of these rosters work. Uh, he doesn't have to be an IGL. Uh, I, I honestly think he'd be better off if he isn't one. Uh, and and I, I think he w- he made, made, made peace with that himself after he left Complexity. I think he... Was was pretty okay with just saying like ah, I don't I don't want to deal with that anymore. When he joined Astralis, I think he had a couple of streams as well where he was just like, yeah, I, I I'm, I'm not calling anymore. I kind of don't want to be. And I thought we would have left it at that, but uh, it looks like that has just kind of tanked everything uh, everything about him. Blamef is like for redditors, Rops is flirting and Blamef is harassment. They do the exact <laughs> okay. same shit. They do like, like it's Rops true. just is a vicious baiter too. I've seen Rops not rotate from his lurk position in TAP's Inferno as the opponents are retaking the B bomb site because he thinks there's yeah. a kill towards A. Like, the, Blamef does similar stuff and some reason like people are okay with it. It's like redditors for whatever reason are okay with JKS and they're okay with Rops, but they're not okay with Blamef. They all bait! They all do the same thing. They all have the same flaws on T side. Sometimes they're a little slow. That's kind of by nature the role. And like you can hate, you can hate like Blame F for doing it, but you better keep that same energy towards Rops. You better keep it towards uh, Sphinx lurking out mid on Vertigo for for Vitality when he's coming out like like thirty seconds too late. Like like people just decide for whatever reason to just like pin their blame because Blame F looks like a schoolyard bully, and they want to actually for whatever reason just say Blame F is a baiter and he's not playing winning Counter Strike. And it's like, you're totally right, Thor, and that the, his CT sides are masterful. Like, he's playing high impact, high, like, positions that need to hold space, and he's doing it and multi-fragging consistently. Like, Blamef is legitimately one of the most misunderstood players by fans because it's the same fans who are a vocal minority on Reddit that are saying, give Neelan his fourth chance when he has shown absolutely dog shit results, and they're saying Blamef is not playing winning Counter-Strike. Like, you, people have such a bad perception for what is winning Counter-Strike at this point that it's not worth the, reading the comments so often, other than the fact that it fuels content like this, because then I can bring up how dumb people are in these in these kinds of shows it's actually it actually you guys actually by writing bad comments gives me something to talk about so i actually thank all of you guys who are upvoted on reddit despite having horrible opinions i love going through your guys stuff you guys make my job easier because it gives me things to talk about because it's almost like i would normally have to create straw men well you guys are the men you guys are the straw men like i actually don't have to i don't have to make up arguments anymore because people people legitimately think blame f doesn't play winning counter-strike when it's like the reason that he wasn't like the i also think like people don't understand like the whole bro for blame f thing it's like 
Blame if really got weirdly scapegoated because his calling wasn't good for Astralis. It's fair to say that. Other than on Ancient, I feel like the calling was very flawed in a lot of ways. And the way that they tried converging on rounds kind of it kind of gives me like similar vibes to what Heroic are doing right now. It's just it was just too slow. It was too much playing to punish. And even though that kind of style, it's I think sometimes Blame if took his individual skill set and put that onto every player on his team and said, okay, everybody wait while split up and play to punish. And these were the complaints I had with Astralis' T side. It was just that they would do that. The C CTs would then re-aggress in a position with like a flash or a double push and they would gain either information or they would get a kill back into the round and sometimes the mid rounding got really out of hand for Astralis because now you've lost ground even though you probably should have just converged a little bit earlier. All of that being said, for Blamef not to get onto a top 10 team is is flat out that's inexcusable for this space except for the fact that i imagine his buyout is absurd i imagine that astralis have him by the balls right now because they're just holding him with this incredibly just out just outright despicable contract i have to assume i have to just assume that because i, I assume also in another way that bro was much cheaper than blame f and they could have even have signed bro while uh, putting Blame F on the bench for a reduced contract uh, payout because usually it's in your contract. If you're on the bench, you're getting a quarter up to a, from like a quarter to half of your normal salary. I bet you in that window of a money saved for for this team for Astralis, they were able to afford not only Bro's uh, monthly salary but even able to potentially buy him out of a team like Monty if they, if it was a low buyout. So I yeah for this guy not to be competing right now. I I mean. I'll even go a step further. I feel like for someone like JKS to not be competing right now. Also, like he yeah, played winning Counter-Strike at his best. I feel like both of them should be on rosters right now. And for them to not be is just, it just shows like the state that this space is in and why, unfortunately, contracts and lack of guarantees and everything like that have really just kind of ruined what could possibly be like the best space in such an open free market. But like, nah, we just have to like chain and shackle players. By the way, on the point you say there, there's also two contract-related reasons. One is, like, yeah, you're probably right. Because I'm going to guess, by the way, he's one of the people, the rumor was, that was on massive salary. Him and Device were obviously the two you signed for a bazillion dollars, right? Because that was who you're building around. Then the second factor is, when you have to pay the dickhead tax to fucking Heroic to get down... You're not going to sign him and then throw him straight in the bin. So I'm sorry, Blame F was sacrificed to allow Stown to have all his roles. That's just clearly obvious. Like, when Blame F was there, Stown was not a fucking top player. Now, magically, Stown's popping off again because they just gave him the fucking spot. So I also think, by the way, what a disloyal fucking org Astralis is. I'll just put this out there. Do you remember when Blame F joined Astralis with Config and immediately carried the fuck out of that Blast Finals land? What the fuck would this team be without him? Do you remember that one that call, uh, IM Cologne run they made in 2020? 22 where they made top four that was all him that was all it wasn't glaive calling it wasn't fucking config it was just all this guy and then also i'll just throw this out there in order to tell me he was never good guys welcome to the dark side you've just admitted the hl tv top 20 is fucking fugazi because are you ready i'm about to read off four numbers so in 2020 he was number six in 2021 he was number 13 in 2022 he was number 12 and in 2023 last year Five months ago, he was twenty. He was number sixteen. The lowest he ever was in a four-year span was sixteenth at the end of a year in Counter Strike. So either something enormous happened in the last three to four months. He wasn't in bench that. It was like two months in the last two, in two months. Something insane happened. Or you all think that the game will restart and the HL TV Top Twenty is fraudulent. It's just for noobs who watch stats. Which is it? Because I'm told all the time I'm a hater if I say that. I'm told that like that is the best minds in Counter-Strike looking at the... You don't know how to interpret stats, story. Do you want to know the irony? I'll do a little plug here. On my side channel, I actually interviewed someone whose literal whole career, he's like a 50-year-old man, is in statistics. And he says that I have actually, through completely parallel intuitive means, stumbled correctly onto the approach to statistics. And statistics can never tell you an answer. They're just a bunch of algorithms sorting numbers into a list and essentially the list uh, by what order you do it you decided that beforehand in order to create the model so if you created the model how could you then say the model now tells me which is better it doesn't you you told yourself which is better you decided what the metric was so the weirdest thing of all time and by the way i can tell you one of the reasons if you want an argument i don't believe it but if you want an argument as to why blame f is a fraud and he shouldn't have been top 20 it's the same as jim isn't it i'll guarantee he's killing the fuck out that kst score i've always you know, you know what? I never ever use that. Have you noticed? I never reference the KST. I'll even sometimes 
difference in impact rate. I don't even think that's that terrible. I think it could sometimes be a bit skewed. The KST one just rewards fuckers who, who do bait and who do save, by the way. It just does. It gives you like a yeah. stat as if you did something, whereas actually sometimes you're doing the opposite of something. So I don't think it's the case. I think there's a middle ground. I don't think he was ever actually like, look, he was never like the third best rifle in the world for me. That was always too far. But the idea is not even top 10. And also, the reason his numbers have tanked if you're a stats watcher, it's because they made him IGL. And also, remember the last lineup where it was him and Device, then it was like Glaive, Altex, and then fucking Borup, or Boz and Borup, wasn't it? Get the fuck out of my face. Like, every other player thought a shit lineup is it's supposed to be a monster, so I just think this whole thing's crazy. So, okay, let's do the ugly now. Paladin, what is your ugly? see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.